Victor's Assembly Church is located along River Road at former Casino Cinema near Kenya Uniform Distributors. To give you offerings, send through our in-person number 0722 712 this morning because you have allowed us to step into divine order you are the one that orders our steps and you're the one that makes decrees of our lives that no man can change when you open a door no man can shut when you say you are we are blessed nobody can curse us thank you because you are in charge of the affairs of our lives this Sunday morning we appreciate you and we appreciate you because of everybody that is in this service, whether physically or virtually. We pray that Jehovah God, you will fix their foundation. You will fix everything that is out of order. And when you do it, all glory and honor shall be to your name. And the church say, Amen. 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 Appreciate the person standing next to you. Tell them I'm glad that you came to church today on a cold morning. Amen. If they look amazing, it's important to recognize. Remember, we are a spiritual family. Uh, remember, we are also a household. So it's important. The praise and worship, you're looking just awesome. You look awesome. The ushering department, you look exceptionally good. Amen. Everybody is dressed for the occasion because our services are a celebration of what God has done. So kindly take your seat in the presence of God. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. I want us to talk about fix my foundation, Jesus. Fix my foundation, Jesus. So open with me to the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 16. I believe you've carried your Bible. If you have your Bible, shout, I have my Bible. Amen. So because we have forbidden ourselves from using phones, because even in schools, you are not permitted to use phones. You are not. Uh, because they are a distraction. From verse 5. Now when King David came to Buhirim. There was a man whose family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimei, son of Gera, coming from there. He came out cursing continuously as he came. And he threw stones at David and at all the servants of King David. And were all the people, all the mighty men, were on the right hand and on his left. Open, Minister Moses, open Second Kings. That will be the next we'll read. So be, stand, be on standby, Second Kings. No, actually, First Kings chapter 2. Uh, Second Kings, uh, First Kings chapter 2 from verse 2. That will be what you'll be reading next after me. So hold your horses for a while. Also she may say it. That's when he cursed. Come out. Come out. You bloodthirsty man. You rogue. The Lord has brought upon you all the blood of the house of Saul. In whose place you have reigned. And the Lord has delivered the kingdom to the hand of Absalom your son. So now you are caught in your own evil. Because you are a bad, thirsty man. Then Abishai, the son of Zuriah, said to the king, Why should this dead dog cast my lord the king? Please let me go over and take off his head. But the king said, What have I to do with you, you sons of Zariah? So let him cast, because the lord has said to him, Cast David. Who then shall say, Why have you done so? Uh, kindly lead for us, Minister Moses. First Kings chapter 2 from verse 2. From verses 2, the Bible says, I will go the way of all the earth. Be strong, therefore, and prove yourself a man, and keep the charge of the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his commandments, his judgments, and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that you may prosper in all that you do, and whatever you turn, that the Lord may fulfill his word which he spoke concerning me, saying, if your sons take heed to the way to walk before me in truth with all their heart, with all their soul, he said, you will not lack a man on the throne of Israel. Verses 5. Moreover, you know also what Job the son of Zariah did to me and what he did to the two commanders of the armies of Israel, to Abner, the son of Ner, and Massa, the son of Jether, uh, who, whom he killed. And he shed the blood, uh, and he shed the blood of war in time of peace, and to put the blood of war on the belt that was around his waist, and on his sandals that were on his feet. Verses six. Therefore, according to your wisdom, 
do it do not let his gray hair go mm -hmm. down in the grave in peace amen therefore according to your wisdom do not allow his gray hair to go to the grave in peace we are saying fix my foundation jesus why does our foundation need to be fixed but even before we begin asking why it should be fixed what is your foundation it is your roots it is where you are cut from it is where you come from it is on what values you're standing on what declarations you're standing on what curses or blessings that you're standing on because your foundation determines your path of life. So as we deal with that, I want to talk about the disorder that is brought as a result of dishonor. Dishonor brings disorder. That is why God is very systematic in the way he has allowed families to be governed. The way God has commanded that let those be in authority be considered to be of higher honor. Those that teach the doctrine and teach the word of God to be considered of great honor. Even Apostle Paul addressed the same in Ephesians chapter 6. Saying children obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Honor your father and mother which is the first commandment with a promise. That it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. Because God expects that in our lives there are people that will contribute and will give us direction. And those people deserve double honor. Tell your neighbor they deserve double honor. The first person you are introduced to when you are born is your parent. Whether a biological parent or a step parent. But they are your parents. The Bible leaves no gray area concerning their position. What does the Bible say? Honor them. So anytime you honor them, there will be order in your lives. You will live long. Everything you touch will prosper. But anytime you dishonor them, the opposite will happen. You are going to live less. You are going to have an, a lesser quality life because God expects honor. He says the same concerning the church, that the church is not amorphous. The church has a government that is laid by God. And those that teach the word and doctrine deserve double honor. The Bible also talks about the king, that the king needs to be honored. Pray for those that are in authority, that they may lead you in godly ways. God leaves no gray areas concerning a system that, you know, constant, concerning a system of governance in the home, in the family, in the workplace, in, in, even in the church. God does not leave gray areas. Why? Because God is a God of order. I want you to say after me, my God is a God of order. I can hear you. Somebody say every seed of dishonor in my foundation must be corrected today in the name of Jesus. There are many people, according to Ezra chapter 4 verse 14, according to the ESV version, I read that since you have taken an oath of loyalty to the king, it is not right for us to withstand his dishonor. You have taken a vow to be loyal to the king. And to be loyal to the president and to the nation of Kenya. Anytime you dishonor that, you are not considered innocent. So when we talk about honor, what are we talking about? We are talking about honor for longevity. Honor for longevity. Honor for longevity. As you honor your father and mother, you will live long in the land. Most of us know very well. We come from foundations of fathers and mothers that are misbehaved. There is no credible reason for you to dishonor them. Hello. Are, you, are we communicating? That's why Apostle Paul was saying in Ephesians 6, if you read from verse 1 there to 5, he says that as so fathers do not provoke your children to anger. But even when you are provoked to anger, refuse to be provoked. Tell your neighbor, I refuse to be provoked. I tell them because I already am sending some people to the security department. Tell them I am not ready to be provoked. So when you see trouble, what do you do? You run away from it and cover your heart. Why? Because anytime there is an error in the foundation, something greater needs to be done for the foundation to be fixed. Because you have seen buildings that have been built in this nation. The latest one we had was in uh, Keno, where a whole story building was built, but the foundation was faulty. It was only waiting for the last stone to be put there, and the building came clambering down. 
Time was wasted. Money was wasted. Lives could have been lost. Anytime you're living in a faulty foundation, you are not only a danger to yourself, but a danger to the people around you. And that is why I came to call out for disorder. Any disorder in our foundation, whether self-sponsored or whether we found ourselves in the disorder, it must be corrected in Jesus' name. That is why in the family Sunday, you invite your family members and as they come here, we are going to call back order. What happened uh, that nobody makes it in my family? This order, disorder must be corrected. Uh, how come that everybody is a single parent? Uh, in my generation, uh, there must have been a disorder. It must be corrected. Uh, how come nobody is educated? Uh, is it that we are so intellectually poor? No, there is a disorder in the foundation. It must be corrected. Uh, somebody say it must be corrected. Uh, lift your voice and say it must be co corrected. Uh, it must be corrected in the name of Jesus. It must be corrected in the name of Jesus. How come nobody has ever traveled? And whoever they have to travel, they were deported on arrival. Why? There is a disorder in the foundation. How come that all the males are wasted? All the females are wasted? Nobody lives to see a hundred. There is a disorder in the foundation. How come there is no bigger or bigger or biggest? All of you are equal in the home. Is it that there is no honor in that house? No, the parents are to be honored. But what the enemy did when men were asleep, the devil introduced this order. And that is why we came to kick out the spirit of disorder that we may live long in the land of our blessing. We will live long in our businesses. We will live long in whatever we do. Open up your mouth and say, seed of dishonor in my foundation that has made my blessing short-lived dry up in the name of Jesus dry up in the name of Jesus short-lived blessings blessings that don't last temporary success temporary gratification and so shall it be in Jesus' name. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. So when the Bible talks about order in your foundation in regards to honor, it's talking about uh, delightsome inheritance. Delightsome inheritance. Inheritance that comes with sweetness. When there is honor in a family or in the foundation of a person, one thing that will be an expression that there is honor in a foundation is when there is delightsome or sweet inheritance. Where the inheritance does not come at a price of blood, discomfort, going to courts to settle your case. It was not like that in the beginning. That foundation must be corrected. Your children will not fight over your, your, your properties. You will not fight over your father's property. You will not kill each other because of a, a quarter acre. Somebody say the devil is a liar. Any devil waiting at the gate of inheritance, we are correcting that disorder. It is from generation to generation. Ah, it shall be like a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. The inheritance shall be good. Ah, lift up your hands and say any demonic power standing at the gate of inheritance in my father's house in my mother's house I dethrone you let there be order let there be order let there be order in Jesus name I have seen it in so many families that they will be okay but the, the monster is buried until the parents die and then you see people that were best of friends they begin to fight over small things over money that is not even worth to sustain you for two years. And people fight, they hate each other, they call each other names, to an extent they even shed blood. We have seen people hire assassins to kill their brethren because of inheritance. The devil is a liar. Lift up your voice and say, any voice that I said, I will never inherit anything from my foundation. You are a liar. By the blood of Jesus, I correct that disorder. I correct that disorder. I correct that disorder. Take a minute and pray about it. To correct that disorder. Jesus, we love you. 
In Jesus' name do we pray. This is what happened in 2 Kings chapter 2. I mean 1 Kings chapter 2. What Minister Moses has read. Um, when David was dying, just as is usual for fathers, David knew that he's going the way of his fathers. And he charged his son Solomon that I am going the way of my fathers, but I don't want to leave chaos and crisis because that's what good fathers do. That there are families that the enemy has captured. And he has captured because when the father were exiting life, they did not give clear instructions on what is expected to the children. This is what David told Solomon, that I know she may, what he did to me. I did not respond to him then because that battle was not my priority. But you are wise, my son. What you do, make sure that you will deal with him because if you don't deal with him, in the day of your power, he'll be a, a, a pain in your neck. No father or mother is supposed to leave a battle for their children. It is an error. Somebody say it is an error. It is an error for you to leave deaths for your children. I pray that in the time we are exiting life, our children will not be servicing our debts. Can I get a better amen? amen. That you will put everything in order. He even told him that there is Joab and his family. You know what they did to me. They will never ever enjoy peace. They must be dealt with. Because they killed Abner, a man that was innocent. What was he telling him? Anytime you are dealing with anybody of generation of Shimei, know that they are shame bringers. Anytime you see Joab, know they are blood suckers. So my son, be wise. It is your responsibility as a parent to tell them, these people, watch out for them. Because if you don't allow that, the foundation will be compromised. Can I get a better amen? Can I get a better amen? The third uh, ingredient of honor is that honor is the only way that order is established in institutions and in families. Honor. Honor gives you establishment of institutions and of families. Anytime there is honor, order is there. So what is the, uh, you know, the fruit of order? It's just institutions and families are established because they are busy growing and with few fights. Have you seen where there is dishonor? Even when one child goes wrong, nobody can correct them because they don't fear the father, they don't fear the mother. Every parent here, I advise you, live honorably as possible before your parents, I mean before your children. So that in the day of crisis, they, has, they have a voice they can listen to. Oh my God. But when you become like Noah, you drink and you lay yourself bare before your children in the day when your voice will be important. Nobody will listen to you. I pray that disorder shall not be part of our homes in Jesus' name. I can't get a better amen. So when there is order in the family, there is establishment. When there is order in a church, there is establishment. When there is order in a nation, there is established. So for the enemy to be able to introduce disorder, what does he do? He creates chaos in the foundation. Any split, splinter ministry, any church that is begun out of another church because a member felt they were anointed and they lived with members, any time they go away, it is built on a faulty foundation. They will never prosper. They may look like they are growing, but there are other things that cannot sustain such a system. The same with families. When you notice that marriages is very hard for them to be established, you know, businesses is very hard to be established in businesses. Most likely there is disorder in the foundation. Am I communicating? Lift your hands and say, every disorder in the foundation of marriages, in the foundation of institutions, that owe me a blessing that was created from home by the power in the blood of Jesus, I correct that disorder. I correct that disorder. I correct that disorder. I correct that disorder. In whose name? In Hosea chapter 4 and verse 18. Hosea chapter 4 verse 18. Hosea chapter 4 verse 18. Minister Moses, you will read that for me. Hosea 4 18. And the Bible says, Their drink is rebellion. They commit halatory continually. Their harula Harulas dearly love dishonor. I'll read again. Their drink is rebellion. 
Their commitment, they commit halatory continually. Our rulers dearly love dishonor. Amen. Their rulers truly love. Kindly, I'll break protocol for this one. But anyway, let me read from what I saw in the ESV version says that uh, while you had, when you, where, where you drink excess, they prostitute. And they, uh, they prostitute themselves and sow the seed of dishonor. What the enemy wants is to introduce chaos at home, confusion at home, so that by the time you are coming here, there is already disorder. Were you there in school where watoto hakuwa nastuliwa na mwalimu? It begins from home. And the enemy, if he captures you from home, he allows you to sow the seed of dishonor, you will never ever enjoy establishment. I prophesy to you today, there will be establishment of homes in this place. There will be establishment of, of, of blessings in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. God will establish your going and your coming back because the foundation must be fixed. Lift up your voice and say, Lord, establish me by correcting my foundation. Every disorder in my foundation by your supernatural power. Fix it for me. Fix it for me. Lord, fix my foundation. 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 I can hear you. Psalm chapter 4 verse 2. Rabba gade bohosa. Mandere bosata bagada dada hai. And so shall it be. In Jesus' name, you take your seat uh, comfortably in the presence of God as we read Psalm chapter 4 and verse 2. Psalm chapter 4, verses 2. How long, O you sons of men, will you turn my glory to shame? How long will you love worthless and seek falsehood? I'll read again. How long, O you sons of men, mm -hmm. will you turn my glory to shame? Mm -hmm. How long will you love worthlessness? and seek falsehood. Amen. So one of the key attributes that you will always find in people that carry the seed of dishonor, which of course is called disorder, <laughs> you will find that they love worthless things. He that loves alcohol, he that loves pleasure, will never ever be honorable. Because pleasure and dishonor, they go together. And I'm not saying that life should not be pleasurable. But there are limits to how you can have your pleasure. There are limits to how. Anytime you become a man that loves pleasure without limitation. You will become like Noah. You will drink in the presence of your children. And once they discover you according to Genesis chapter 9, 18 verse 29. Write it down. You will go and read it. He drank himself naked. Because he loved worthlessness. He loved pleasure. He loved to live a life without rules. Anytime you come to a place where you don't want rules, then you are signing up for disorder and dishonor. I am relating the both of them. Because we will talk about Fix My Foundation on the perspective of dishonoring God through witchcraft in the third service. But for this one, we want to talk about from home. From home. Where disorder, where you've known your father when he's drunk or your mother. They have all kinds of vulgar language. There is nothing they cannot do. They did not, you saw your mother did not respect your grandmother. So eventually you, you know there is nothing big about authority. The minute that dishonor is established, what will happen is that God cannot endorse disorder. It will be like probably in the case of Noah. You will cast your generation, but truth be said, you are the one that caused it. I pray that we will not love worthlessness. I pray that we will not love worthlessness. Let me give you examples of people that sold the seed of dishonor and what happened to them. The number one I've already said about, uh, no, about Ham. Ham was told that Cast shall be Canaan. He shall be a slave all his life. Canaan will be a slave. If you remember in the Bible, the journey from Egypt was to go and dispossess Canaan. Who was Canaan? The generation of Ham. It means that they had no portion in God. As a result of dishonoring his father, his portion was divided in the, uh, you know, divided to all the other tribes of Israel. They were strong, yes, but eventually they were defeated. And God was giving Israel backup to make sure that Canaan is disinherited. The minute you touch the, 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 the hem of dishonor, God will back everybody who is trying to pull you down. 
Because dishonor establishes disorder. I pray that heaven will be on your side. I pray that when you call on God, he will answer you. You know there is disorder in your life when even when you call him in crisis, he does not come. Because anytime God senses disorder, he is a God of order. He steps back. Though Canaan was a good man, he did not commit the sin. It is the father who committed. But from the word go, because the blessing was taken away from him. The whole of the community of Israel, plus anointing and calling Moses, they were I've told you our chief assignment is to go and disinherit Canaan. I pray that in the name of Jesus that God will not support your enemies. God will not support the wicked to disinherit you and your children. I pray that there will be order. I pray that there will be order. I pray that there will be order. Lift your voice and say, oh God, fix my foundation. Fix my foundation. Fix my foundation. Fix my foundation. That God will not support your boss to oppress you. God will not support the man of God. He will not call Moses. Anoint him. Perform miracles to punish you and your generation. Remove your punishment from us. That's your prayer this morning. Remove your punishments from us. Where there is disorder. Where we held against you. Where we sold the seed of dishonor. I pray that God you will show us mercy. That God will not gather the Amalekites. God will not gather the Philistines. God will not even make alliances. So that he can avenge the sin of harm. The sin of harm. It may take long. But eventually it will come. It may take long. But it will eventually come. But we are here to appeal to you Lord. Correct the disorder in our foundation. Correct the disorder in our foundation. We have seen what we ought not to see. We have said what we ought not to say. We have walked in a path we ought not to walk in. And as a result, disorder has been established. But we appeal to you, God, that you may make a way. You may make a way. You may make a way. No matter how sinful your father or mother are, they are still your parents. Any seed of dishonor will be carried forward. Will be carried forward. But the children will never know it was dishonor. What they will see is disorder. People will not see dishonor. They will see disorder. Let's appeal to God in the next three minutes. Every seed of dishonor that has created disorder in my foundation. I appeal to you, Jehovah. I appeal to you, Daddy. Fix my foundation. Open your mouth and cry to God. Is there disorder in marriage? There is a seed of dishonor. Because anytime dishonor is sold, there is no fruitfulness. There is no inheritance. There is no establishment. Let us appeal to God. Because he's the one that took away our curses. That's better now. Mandere bo shata ba 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 be shata ba ga da 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 shata ba ga da da. Pray for yourself. In Jesus' name do we pray. I told you you don't need to look far for you to identify disorder. When you notice that what others enjoy easily, you don't enjoy. Like one of the key things that God created in the Garden of Eden was marriage. Was a union between a husband and, and what was the main goal? It was so that they may be fruitful and multiply. 
It is a first institution that God created. What did the enemy do? He created this order. Said that the children that were born out of them, one became a murderer, one became, it means that the devil had a share in that home and God had a share. Look at your family. You will notice if there is disorder, there is one that is on the side of Satan and there is one on the side of God. Our work is to dispossess Satan and make sure that our families will be in order according to the will of God. Lift up your hands and say, every agent of disorder in my family. I call you out of darkness. Order in the name of Jesus. Order in the name of Jesus. Every agency of darkness, any person in my family. Yeyote analeta vurugu, analeta fujo, analeta watu kuinukiana. Call them into order now. They may be an uncle. They may be a mother, they may be a cousin, they may be a grandmother. Zebagana mana mama mama. Let everything be no done now. Zebege, you better pray. We are having challenges of drunkenness in families, disorder in families, witchcraft in families. Somebody must stand up and pray for order. In Jesus' name do we pray. There are other two cases. Because of time, I will just highlight them to you. It is the case of Absalom. Absalom made himself king. To replace the father. It was not because he knew that he was qualified. It is only because he was greedy and ambitious and wanted to inherit his father while he's alive. And what did he do? He looked for the weakness of the father. Let me tell you, the people who lead you and your father and mother will always have weakness because they are human. Uh-huh. Tell me, but just like you have weakness. Your parents, your leaders will have weakness. But when you carry the Absalom spirit, you will magnify the weaknesses and forget the strength. That's true. Absalom said that you know my father is a hard, hard-hearted man. He is a fighter. And uh, he has no time for you. He's busy. And it's true. Because he's managing the whole kingdom. It's not easy. So he said, for me, I am going to be the good guy. What I will do? I'll be sitting at the city gates. When you come, I'll be greeting you and say, hello, what can I do for you? PR cannot take away honor. <laughs> ah, even if you have good PR, good PR does not mean you are anointed. It ends at PR. Even if you know how to speak before a ruler, if you do not have order in your life, it will turn against you. You will die with what you love most like Absalom. Your hair will kill you. But I pray that dishonor will never be had in our midst. You will be tempted to dishonor, but refuse. You will be invited to dishonor, but you will stand your ground and say, even if I'm invited to this, I refuse to say yes. I refuse to say yes. And so what happened is that Absalom took all the father's concubine, and he had an affair with them on top of the roof in the presence of all Israel. He violated his father to the core. No wonder because hair represents glory and beauty. We don't hear of Absalom's children. We do not hear. His story died there. There are people that have been wiped off from the face of the earth because of the seed of dishonor. And let me tell you, be loyal. Tell your neighbor, be loyal. Be loyal. To be loyal means that you will look out for the interest of the people that are ahead of you. People that God has put their tenure with security, that you will be loyal to them. Like Ezra said, that because we are loyal to the king, this thing cannot be done under our watch. To be loyal is to refuse to badmouth somebody behind their back. To be loyal is to say they cannot harm him as long as I'm there. Why? Because I understand that any seed of dishonor I sow, it will come back to me seven times. Lift up your voice and say, every seed of disloyalty I have ever sown, that is waiting to manifest. In the day of my battle, by the blood of Jesus, and by your mercy, oh God, let the seed dry up. Let the seed dry up. 
Let the seed dry up. The seed of disloyalty. Disloyalty. Zema na 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 ne da da da. Shera ma na 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 ne da da da. In Jesus' name do we pray. In Genesis 35, from verse 22 to 25, you will see a man called Reuben. Reuben did the same. Reuben did the same. He took Bilha, his father's concubine, and he took him as a wife. And the Bible says that whoever curses his father or mother, they are like to be cast off. Or whoever dishonors their part, there is, a, there is a curse of disorder that comes. And if you look at Reuben, if you follow the the, 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 the history of Reuben. Reuben, their men were few. That's number one. To an extent that even when they were allocated their land, they had to call for backup for all the children of Israel to help them because the land they were given was too much, but they were few. It means that if they went, they would have been wiped away. So you will realize that in families where there is disorder, literal things require external support. Hey, are you hearing me? The Bible says, Joe, they were few in number. Yay! But I never suffered any man to do them. Huh. The reason why you are begging and you are helpless as a family is not because you are ten. It is because you are disinherited. Because there is a seed of dishonor. That was a sub Moses delivered three million people alone. You don't need to be surrounded to have victory. Oh my God. Are we communicating in the house? Though they were few in number, as they went from nation to nation, he suffered no man to do them no harm. Reuben, though they are men, were few. What happened is that the evil of Israel had to be called to help them get their own land. Because the curse of the Lord was upon them. And it is not the curse of the Lord because God is the one who came up with the curse. It is a prescription of Jacob that God used. That is why I try with all your best to get blessings from people that are in authority. When you leave one company to another, make sure your boss speaks well of you. Make sure you do. Make sure you do. Because you are building stones. Are you the only employer? What they say, if you are unfaithful, they carry oil on their head. It will affect you. And so Moses had to come. Because not because Moses did not trivialize what Reuben had done. But he realized that the curse of Reuben is affecting his assignment. There are some of you I deliver not because of you deserve it. But because my assignment must be accomplished. I don't know that you understand. He said that I have to deliver these people. In Deuteronomy that he said, let Reuben live. Let not his men be few. Because he realized the land, they already have the land. They have labored for 40 years to get it. And now the land is here. And Reuben can't take it. He said, not under my watch. Lord, let Reuben live. Let him be stable. Let his men be many. And when the curse was removed, suddenly Reuben got his inheritance. I pray that in the name of Jesus, that because of the assignment of this house, even if you are meant to be poor all your days, let the curse of poverty be destroyed in the name of Jesus. All I need is an amen from you. All I need is an amen from you. Even if your men were supposed to be few, your helpers were supposed to be few, by the reason of the assignment of this house, I decree your freedom. I decree your freedom.
fixing them. Whoever is making your family miserable, the Lord is fixing them. As you celebrate, shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph. Rejoice in the Lord. And again I say rejoice. Let the people praise you. Let the people praise you. So shall the earth yield its increase. Let the people praise you. Let the people praise you. That the earth, that the earth, that the earth may yield its increase. I prophesy your increase is coming. I declare your increase is coming. Ah. Bwana asifiwe sana. My name is Reverend Ruth Wamoyo on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter and on YouTube. All you need to do is just go to my page, like and follow me and to my YouTube channel, I'm Ruth Wamoyo. Just go there and hit the red subscribe button. You will receive the latest music, the sermons, the gorgeous woman show divine encounter and all the services, even lunch hour services. God bless you as you do that.